guys, this is Rock King 3 being in the live commentary for it's a 5. Today I'm going to be doing a parts and tune on a Shelby Cobra 427 in the B class. Had a lot of requests for this car and I've been working on it. And it was one of those where I was trying to balance it between being a really good handling car and being a really fast car. So I have, I have a tune specifically for turning tracks too. But this one is specifically for power. This may not be the best track to show the power on, but it'll work really well like on Bathurst and uh, probably the new tracks that we have with the faster top speed. Looks like I got Money Man 300 out here and a Ford Focus RS, so we're talking a couple different cars. To be honest, if you guys drove my Buick GNX, this feels a lot like that car, but I think it's a little bit faster in the straightaways, or, or uh, maybe not faster, but maybe faster acceleration. So you have to kind of, kind of try to stay smooth with it, unlike what I'm doing here. Um, but it still works pretty well. Let me just give you guys the tune on this. I'll meet you guys over in the parchment. Okay, and we're back. So in the parts tune, I just want to show you real quick the overview. This is a B600 Shelby Cobra 427, 434 horsepower, 500 pounds feet of torque, just over, just almost 2,100 pounds, and a 51% front, and with a seven liter V8. Pretty awesome. All right, so going through the parts like we typically do, I would like to go to the conversion first, show you what conversions that we did. Um, we have the stock engine, we have the stock drive line, and you can see I tested that. The car gets even faster. Um, but everything on the conversion is stock at this point. We have the uh, stock air filter, stock intake, stock carburetor, stock ignition. We have the race exhaust, so we got nine horsepower for eight pi there. We have the stock cams and valves, stock valves there. Stock engine, and we have stock race pistons, and we have the sport flywheel. Don't usually have the sport flywheel, but that must have been a PI play. Uh, I'm going to have the race brakes, the race springs, the race anti roll bars, the race cage, and full weight reduction. Again, 2,100 pounds. Pretty light car. I have a stock clutch. Stock transmission. Ooh, sorry, street transmission. I didn't realize I changed that. Actually, you gain a PI by <laughs> going to the better transmission. Uh, we have the sport drive line. And the race differential. All right, this is where we couldn't do a whole lot with the PI because you can see there's a pretty big gain on the first level of tire. So we have the stock tire compound. We have the full width in the front, and we will have the full width in the rear. Don't know if I even put any wheels on it. Let's go back and see if that's the stock wheels. Might be the stock wheels. Let me see. Oh, nope. We have the lightest wheels possible. Advan RG11 or G11. Not sure which one it is. And we have the stock rim width in the front. And we have the stock in the rear. Looks like you can go pretty big with it if you wanted to without gaining any PI. Um, I just left it a fast car and it you know, handled as well as it could handle. Front Forza wing and the rear Forza wing as well. 
All right, so let's take a look at the tune. Um, tire's pretty standard for me, 28.5 front and back. Um, gearing, standard, because it's a stock transmission. On the camber on this, we went a little bit higher than normal, and I'm starting to play with this a little bit more with some other cars. Um, but we're negative 2.5 in the front, negative 2.0 in the rear. And tow is 0.0, .0 in the front and negative 0.1 in the rear. And our front caster is up to 6.0. Anti-roll bars in the front are 2210, and the rears are 1786. Ran the springs pretty soft on here to make it kind of handle at least as well as the muscle, some of my muscle cars. Um, we have 385.6 in the front and 380.5 in the back. Some of that is due to its overall light weight. So when I factored in my calculations, it started pretty low already, um, but I reduced them even further. Uh, move the right height all the way up because it was bottoming out on a few tracks. This is fairly standard for me, 8.5 in the front, 7.5 in the rear. Um, I didn't have really any reason to change that too much. And bump stiffness is pretty soft, both front and rear, 2.9 and 2.3. Had the full arrow front and back. And the braking on this car was a little bit different. I was having a hard time locking up. Um, so I actually went all the way down to 49%. It's a 51% front heavy car, but this 49% seemed to, to make it break really well. I don't, I don't hardly lock them up anymore. Uh, braking force is 140%. It does stop very, very well for a car that has stock tires on it. And differential is 20% in the acceleration and 13% in deceleration. Um, don't know really how to compare this to other cars. It kind of drives like a muscle car. It kind of drives like that GNX I was talking about. Um, but it accelerates a little bit quicker, I think, that because it's so light. Um, I think this is a really fun car because you can make it both a speed car and a handling car. It doesn't, you can't really make it an in-between. I mean, you kind of can, um, but it's hard to find a good setting to race that on. So this one I made for multiplayer racing, and it works really well because of the acceleration. If I was to do some actual lapping with it, this is a top anywhere between probably 400 and maybe 150. It's a pretty fast car, do pretty well, but if you wanted to get more times, uh, faster times out of your car, it would have to be uh, handled a little bit better. All right, thanks a lot for listening, guys, and I hope you enjoy, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.